Insurgents today hit an Iraqi police patrol just south of Baghdad. They set off a roadside bomb, killing seven officers. No Americans died in, the, in Iraq today. The last deadly insurgent attack took place two days ago. They still happen, of course. And successful or not, insurgents still try to kill Americans dozens of times each and every day. So why do they fight? That's the question a new documentary tries to answer. Two journalists spent 10 months in 2003 in the earliest days of the insurgency doing something that few others have been able to. They talked with Iraqis fighting U.S. forces in the streets of Iraq. Now, the film that they made is now being screened by the U.S. military to help inform soldiers about their enemy's perspective. Take a look. Suppose Iraq invaded America and an Iraqi soldier was on a tank passing through an American street, waving his gun at the people, threatening them, raiding and trashing houses. Would you accept that? That's how a Muslim cleric interviewed in the new film Meeting Resistance explained why some in Iraq were taking up arms. We're talking about a car, a suicide, car bomb. In 2003, the picture painted by the Bush administration of the insurgents was that they were dead enders, supporters of Saddam unwilling to give up. But that's not the picture that emerges in the interviews with early insurgent supporters, whose identities were obscured by the filmmakers. This fighter was tortured under Saddam, but now sees himself as a defender of his family and his home. When they occupied Iraq, they subjugated me, subjugated my sister, subjugated my mother, subjugated my honor, my homeland. Before the U.S. invasion, this man was a teacher. If someone comes and occupies another man's home and takes away his food, money and property, how could he not defend himself? A person who doesn't fight for himself or his country shouldn't be called a human being. Molly Bingham co-directed the film. It's about not wanting to be occupied. And I think um, people all over the world, all throughout history, have been occupied. And resisting occupation is not an abnormal response to that. For some, the motivation is nationalism. For others, religion. The desire to expel a non-Muslim occupying force. This woman smuggles weapons under her robes. This country is precious. My children aren't more precious. My soul isn't more precious. In 2003, foreign fighters had already begun coming to Iraq. This man came from Syria for jihad. My mother told me, I don't want you to come back alive. I want you to return as a martyr. While the filmmakers were interviewing all these people, the U.S. military found itself unprepared for the strength of the insurgency. It was denied by the administration. The Iraqis were known throughout the Middle East for, uh, for, their, for their aggressive stance on something like this. So uh, it shouldn't have come as a surprise. Now the U.S. military has actually embraced this new film and invited the directors to Baghdad. At this screening in one of Saddam's old palaces, American troops said it was difficult but valuable to hear from the enemy. It touched a lot about the, the culture and uh, how, how they pretty much feel about us. Well, not the entire Iraqi culture, but just the insurgents and how pretty much uh, their faith is pretty strong. Uh, people make choices. They decide what they want to do and why they do it and the reasons they do certain things. But it's hard as a soldier for me to sympathize with what they're doing. What they're doing. Sympathy is not what the filmmakers are trying to get anyone to feel. What they hope these soldiers take away is a fuller understanding of how this insurgency was created and why it's been so hard to stamp it out. Well, the film opens in New York and Washington on Friday nationwide later this month. CNN's Michael Ware has had a remarkable access to all sides in this war since the earliest days and as well as some observations about why the insurgency got started in the first place. We're going to hear from him after a very short break. Why do the insurgents fight? The question is being explored in a new film called Meeting Resistance. It's also something seen as Michael Ware has risked his life to do. We spoke to him earlier. Michael, what we see in these interviews with early insurgents is clearly that the presence of U.S. forces was a motivating factor to, in getting a lot of these people to fight against the U.S. How much of the insurgency now is being driven by just the, the, the mere presence of U.S. forces? Well, from day one, Anderson, that's been one of the primary motivations. Certainly for the nationalist insurgency, if that's what you'd like to call it, both on the Sunni side and the Shia side. Sure, there's lots of agendas and factions within factions, but at the end of the day, what was grossly underestimated from the very beginning was the sense of Iraqi nationalism, the sense of Iraqi national pride, 
I remember in 2003 meeting so many professional military officers, Iraq's equivalent to West Pointers, who were simply aggrieved at the dishonour of firstly having a foreign force, be it Western or of any other kind, occupying their country, tanks in their streets, invading their homes, searching their cupboards, touching their women, be it just for the purposes of a, an ordinary military search. Then you add to that the egregious shame of the disbanding of the Iraqi military and everything that stood for and the status that went with it for these men, which most in the administration now admit was a terrible blunder. And that goes a long way to explaining the heart of the Sunni and even the Shia insurgency in Iraq. This month we've seen suicide attacks down uh, some 50% since January, I believe it is. Uh, civilian death toll down, although still some 800, I think last month, uh, killed Iraqis. Uh, the, the U.S. military death toll down as well. Who is still fighting? I mean, if, if Al-Qaeda is badly damaged, Al-Qaeda in Iraq is badly damaged, as some in the, the U.S. are saying, the Washington Post reporting, that's a belief many commanders have. If, if the Sunnis have awoken and have turned against Al-Qaeda in Al-Anbar and elsewhere, who is it now who's still fighting? Well, the real enemy America has had since the moment it invaded, ignored for years, and only woke up to perhaps a year or so ago. And it's the real winner of all the wars since 9-11, and that's Iran, Anderson. Al-Qaeda is under pressure, but it was never going to be the big winner of the Iraq theater. It was never welcomed. It was only ever tolerated. And the way that Al-Qaeda has been put under the pressure it's under is because America finally accepted the deal that the Sunni former military officers offered them four or five years ago. And think about it. Al-Qaeda is crippled. We herald this in headlines because it's only down to 30 bomb attacks a month. Can you imagine if there was 30 attacks in Israel every month or America or Australia? Yet we still call that a victory. So Al-Qaeda is far from gone. It will always persist. But the great enemy, the one that's fermenting most of the violence and owns the political stage, continues to be Iran, Anderson. Uh, Michael Ware, appreciate the reporting. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, mate.